Hello once again and welcome back to the geodynamics video lectures on viscous deformation and the strength of the lithosphere. In this lecture we'll continue talking about the strength of the lithosphere and the main goal for the lecture is to discuss some other features about this brace Gutza model of the strength of the lithosphere that we saw from the previous video lecture. And so in that previous video lecture we saw two examples of the strength of the lithosphere for slow and rapid deformation or low and high strain rates. And we saw a difference here in that more rapid deformation increases the viscous strength. And so the transition from brittle to viscous deformation or frictional plastic to viscous deformation occurs deeper. And in the case of the mantle lithosphere, we saw uh, the increased viscous strength results in a region where the frictional strength of the mantle lithosphere is actually lower than its viscous strength. And so you have a small portion that would be expected to behave in a brittle manner, for instance, um, possibly having the occurrence of earthquakes in the uppermost mantle lithosphere would give us some indication of that kind of deformation. Now, um, as you can see here, there are some cases where the mantle lithosphere can be brittle. Rapid strain rates is one case. Do you have any other ideas? Are there any other possibilities for how we could have brittle behavior in the mantle lithosphere? Why don't you pause the video for a moment, think about that, and when we come back, we'll talk about some of these other possibilities. Well, let's see. Here's one. Um, this is an example of a transition in terms of the, the dominant um, tectonic stresses. So if we were to transition from the lithosphere being under compression where we see the largest frictional plastic strength, uh, as you'll recall from the previous set of video lectures, we saw that rocks under compression had a larger frictional plastic strength than rocks under extension. And if you transition from compression to extension, you could see here an example of compression where there is no frictional plastic portion of the mantle lithosphere, but there is the equivalent frictional plastic region when the lithosphere is under extension. So that's one way in which we could have uh, brittle behavior in the mantle. There are other things, uh, other kinds of behaviors that can also um, influence the style of deformation or um, how we see the lithosphere deforming. Obviously, we've been looking at models where we consider the crust as a single layer and the mantle lithosphere as a single layer, but you could have multiple layers within your lithosphere. And so, for instance, here we have um, actually a three layer crust, so upper, middle, and lower crust. And you can see in each of those layers, uh, in this example for a low or small strain rate, a frictional plastic region and then transition to uh, viscous deformation, frictional plastic, again, when you hit the top of the middle crust, and then it goes once again viscous. And then here um, in the lower crust, in this case, we see an increase in, um, in the strength, in the differential stress, but there's actually no frictional plastic region in the lower crust in this example. What you can see if you look at the case for a higher strain rate is that the there's no viscous portion of the upper crust. It's purely frictional plastic across its whole thickness. There is a small region of viscous flow in the middle crust at the lower part of the middle crust, but then when you hit the top of the lower crust, we have here, in this case, a zone of frictional plastic uh, deformation that's predicted before transitioning to the viscous behavior. So here, we can see an example of a rheological layering or a lithological layering in which there are three layers. Rheologically, we see three layers for small strain rates, but we only see two layers for more rapid strain rates. And so this is a case where we have a difference in the mechanical behavior of the lithosphere that is a function of the strain rates. 
there are other ways that we can also modify the, the strength of the lithosphere. Um, we haven't seen any examples yet of this, but changing the geotherm, if we increase the temperatures or decrease the temperatures, we would expect to see the viscous strength of the crust go up or down, and that of course will influence the overall strength. And there's also possibilities to undergo metamorphic reactions and have um, the metamorphism result in different mechanical properties of the rocks. So for instance, clay is generally a fairly weak material within the crust, but if you metamorphose clay into a garnet mica schist, the rheological strength or the mechanical strength of the rock will be significantly higher than it was when it was clay. And so as a result of undergoing that metamorphic reaction, you can change the mechanical strength of the rock. Now, up to this point, we've only considered plastic and viscous deformation when we considered the strength of the lithosphere, but of course we can include also the elastic behavior in the lithospheric strength. For our example that we can consider in this case, we could think about an elastic lithosphere, similar to my standard elastic material, my plastic ruler, being flexed downward. And when I push the ruler down in the middle, that would be the equivalent of flexing the lithosphere downward. And when you bend the ruler in that way, the top of the ruler is going to undergo compression and the bottom side of the ruler is going to undergo or experience relative extensional stresses. Now, what's shown here in these figures is essentially that kind of idea. So these aren't strength envelopes in the way that we've looked at them previously, but just changes in the uh, strength as a result of the elastic behavior and elastic um, stress in the crust. So before we had this region here, for instance, on the left side of, uh, of the plot, the left plot, where we had a linear increase in strength, and that was the, the frictional plastic portion of the crust under compression, and then there was a region that was um, viscous beneath that. And so this is for a one layer model of the crust. Now, if we looked at the same thing in tension, we would have a region of linear increase in strength under tension. Of course, it increases at, at a lower rate and then a transition to um, viscous deformation at a greater depth. The effective thickness of the um, elastic part of the lithosphere is only going to be within the region where um, this line is passing through here. And so you can see where this line intersects the um, frictional plastic strength of the lithosphere between here and the equivalent position um, down here in the tensional um, side of the change in differential stress. That's the zone over which we have basically the elastic um, strength in the lithosphere. And so if we have a single layer model, that's going to be basically within this area where the, this line represents the change in stress in the elastic part. So where the elastic stress is lower than the frictional plastic stress, and here where it's lower than the viscous stress, that thickness would be the region that will have the elastic strength in that lithosphere. And the same thing then could be applied to a two layer model um, where we have a region of elastic strength in the top here in H1 between this point and this point. And then the same thing could be said down lower where there's a region of thickness H2. So that's it for the strength of the lithosphere. When we come back in the next video lecture, we're going to play around with the model of the strength of the lithosphere and, and get ourselves a little bit more acquainted with how these lithospheric strength models work. But for now, it's time for your quiz, and I'll see you for the next video lecture.